Hey guys, welcome to Coding Spot and welcome to part two of this tutorial on how to do Google's tic-tac-toe. In the last video, we managed to create the screen, we paint our background, and we draw the four lines of our board. In this video, I'm gonna teach you how to make what I call a console board, and we're gonna do some more functions that are going to be essential for our game to work properly. So we're going to start by importing a model called NumPy. This model will help us create the console board. So let's type import NumPy as MP. Once we have imported this model, we can create our board. So I'm going to create it right here. I'm going to put a comment and I'm going to call it board, but you can call it however you want. And let's type MP dot zeros. And inside this function, we need to pass in a tuple uh, with the number of rows and the number of columns that our board will have. But I'm going to create them as constants. So I'm going to call them board rows with a value of three and board calls with a value of three as well. Let's go ahead and pass those constants here comma board calls we save and we have our board so i want you to see how this board actually looks like so let's go ahead and print it let's save and let's run the file we will need to close our screen for this so as you can see the console board is pretty similar to a tic-tac-toe board but instead of having squares we have zeros so this board is going to be essential for pretty much everything we are going to do in this game. That's why we have to start creating some functions for it. So the first function we want to create is going to be called mark square. And it will basically mark a square in the console board. So instead of having zeros, we are going to have ones or twos, depending on which player mark that square. So let me create the function mark square and we're gonna have three parameters a row a column and a player player and by player i mean or i refer to the player which is marking the square so the function is pretty simple we're gonna access to our board in the index row then in the index column and we're going to set it equal to player. So let me show you what this function does. Let's say player one wants to mark the first square. So that will be the, the square located at the upper left corner. So what we want to do is call our mark square in the row zero, in the column zero, and with a player equal to one. And I'm starting at zero because as you may know, uh, arrays start from zero, not from one. So once we mark that square, we can print again the board. And let me actually comment this one. Let's go ahead and save and run. Let's close our screen. And as you can see, we have successfully marked the first square of our board. So let's go ahead and mark another square for you to know perfectly what this function does. So let's say we want to mark the middle square. So that will be the square located at all the center. So that will be the row one, the column one. And let's say player two wants to mark it. We're going to save and run. Again, we need to close our screen and as you can see we now have marked two squares the first one and the middle one okay guys so i hope that mark square function is now clear for you but if you are still a little bit confused try to play with it and you eventually will understand it so we're gonna create our second function we're gonna call it available square we're gonna receive a row and a column. So this function basically is going to return true if the square is available 
and it's going to return false if the square is not available. So let's create the function. And uh, it's pretty simple. We need to check if board in the row in the call equals zero. Then we're going to return true. Because remember, zeros in this case represent um, that a square is empty. Okay, so otherwise we're going to return false. So this is one way to do it, but there is a shorter way. We can type return board in the row in the call equals equals zero. So this line is the same as this if else. So you can use whatever you want, it would work just fine. I will go with this line just because it's shorter, but it's the same. Okay guys, so let me show you what this available square function does. Let's start by deleting all these. Let's say we want to know if the middle square is available. So is the middle square available? We are now going to print the answer. So we're going to call the available square function. We're going to pass the middle square. So that will be 1, 1. Let's go ahead and save and run. We have to close our screen. And as you can see, uh, it returned true. And that's because it is actually available because we haven't marked that square. Now, what do you think will happen if I mark that square? So one comma one with any player, let's say two, and then we print again this statement. So let's save and run. Let's close the screen. And as you can see, now the answer is false. And that's because we marked the square in between these two statements. Okay, so hope that's clear. And again, if you are a little bit confused, try to play with it and you eventually will get it. Okay, so let's go ahead and create the next function. We're gonna call it is board full. We're not receiving any parameters. And basically this function is going to return true if our board is full and it's going to return false if our board is not full. So how do we want to do this? We want to go through each square of the board and ask each square, hey, are you available? And if the answer is, yeah, I'm available, we want to return false. Why? Because we have found a square which is empty. So that means the board is not full. So we're gonna do this by using two for loops. So the first loop, the first for loop will loop through all the rows and the second for loop will loop through all the columns. So let's write for row in range and we're gonna put our constant here, board rows. Then we're gonna put for call in range board calls. So if this is a little bit confusing for you, just, just know that we are looping with these two for loops, we are looping through all the board. So now we can ask if board in the row and the call. By the way, this row is this one and this call is this one. So if the board in row call equals equals zero, so that means that we have found a, an empty square, we're gonna return false. But if we actually loop through all the board and we didn't find a an empty square, we can return true. 
Okay, so let me show you how this is board full function works. Let's delete all these things. And we're gonna call it. We're gonna print. So let's print this board full. I think the answer is obvious. It should return false. Yep. Now, okay, so actually what we want to do now is mark all squares to see if our function is working correctly. So let's go ahead and copy this loop. So we're going to loop again through all the board, but this time we're going to mark all the squares. So we're going to pass row, call, and let's say player one is marking them, it doesn't matter. And let's print is board full again. Let's go ahead and save and run. Let's go ahead and close the screen. And as you can see, we have a false and then a true. And that's because this is the one returning false. Then we are marking all squares. And then obviously board is full. So it returns true. Okay guys, so hope that's clear. And again, if you are a little bit confused, Try to play with it and you eventually will get it, believe me. Okay, so guys, I think it's all for this video. In the next video, we are going to start drawing our circles and crosses in our screen. And that's it for today. If you like this video, please give a thumbs up, please comment, please subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video.